I wanna make it clear that I don't like saying this, but the Suns are not gonna be back to an NBA Finals for a long time. Do you realize Chris Paul could leave this franchise? An NBA title is out of the question. Reports say that CP3 is gonna turn down that huge option this offseason to become a free agent. And most people would say, why would he ever leave Phoenix? Well, the answer is a lot more obvious than those people will admit. And this video explains why the Suns are in trouble. Yo, it's Casey, this is AM Hoops. Bringing back the gray sweater. Kind of like it, kind of don't. That's why it was out. Give it another shot. But I don't think the Suns are going to get another shot because obviously Chris Paul took the Suns from a lottery team to the finals. He's not the only reason, but he's a big reason. It's not a fluke. It's not what I'm saying. Chris Paul agreed to a trade because he believed in Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Monty Williams, and he was right. But there's a really good chance he leaves for one big reason, and that is money. This dude will seek as much as $100 million over three years, and the Suns don't want to pay that. They almost can't pay that. I mean, they would commit a huge chunk of their salary cap to a 36-year-old who is great, but he could fall off the cliff any day, especially with one injury. Only five guards ever, 35 or older, have logged as many minutes as he did in a finals game. Plus, DeAndre Ayton and Mikel Bridges are owed fat extensions too, which they deserve, and they might not be able to afford CP3. Now, if Chris Paul believes in what they did enough to take a pay cut, yes, I do think he'll come back. But if a team like the Knicks swoop in with all their cap space, he's gone. And if that happens, the Suns are done. Oh, but what about the leap all the other guys took this year? Especially DeAndre Ayton. Uh, Chris Paul is the reason for Ayton's level of success. Not all of his success, obviously. This made me go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Lineups with DeAndre Ayton and CP3 had a plus 7-4 net rating this year. The most of any teammate who played with the big man. In the playoffs leading up to the finals, that was plus 10, which is unreal. Chris has made a lot of big men money in his career. Ayton's just the latest one. And I'm not saying the number one pick hasn't grown on his own, on both ends too. But CP3 is obviously a huge reason why he even said it himself, Chris Paul's the best thing to happen to my career. Like big bro type push, knowing what I got and that I never thought that I had. I think is he was the best thing that happened to my career. If Aiden goes back to earth without CP3, which I think there is a good chance that happens, the Suns are left with one superstar, Devin Booker. I know there's depth around him with Bridges and Aiden and Campaign and Cam Johnson and everyone else, but you need multiple stars to win in the NBA. Devin Booker will be on another Phoenix team that needs a big trade to get over the hump again. One superstar does not cut it these days. So much of this run has been Chris Paul. He contributes a ton offensively running a lethal pick and roll. Dude scored or assisted 54 points in his finals debut, the third most to only Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson. But it's not just game one. He has had like an iconic level game every series, somehow coming back from an awful shoulder injury and off COVID against the Lakers, a 37 point mid-range masterpiece against Denver, and a 41 point closeout game six against the Clippers. He's not just a savvy veteran who leads the team coach on the court. He is literally their best player on some nights who plays defense. If he is off this team, they're screwed. The West is stacked with teams ready to pounce. I hate to say it, but Phoenix got lucky this year. But teams get lucky every year. I know they do, but every Suns opponent was missing either their best or second best player. Every single opponent all the way to the finals. That is different. The Lakers missing AD, the Nuggets without Jamal Murray, and the Clippers without Kawhi. What Phoenix did was impressive, and there is not an asterisk on their postseason at all. But please don't bury your head in the sand about this and think, okay, this is who Phoenix is going to be going forward. Especially without Chris Paul. A West playoff run will be a lot different next year. Impossible without CP3. Now, I know some Suns fans are going to be out there still too stubborn to believe what I'm saying. So think about this. Chris Paul took an OKC team to the number four seed last year with a 0.2 chance of making the playoffs. And then they went back to being garbage. The Suns leaned on CP3 a ton, only playing two games without him this year to get the number two seed. 
He was so good, James Jones won like front office guy of the year, blowing the number 10 pick in the draft. That is insane. So, where will this team be next year without Chris Paul? Well, they still have an amazing roster without the point guard. They went 8-0 in the bubble for a reason before CP3 got there. They're obviously winners, okay? Thank God Devin Booker is finally getting the respect he deserves. Mikel Bridges was a borderline All-NBA defense player. DeAndre Ayton answered a lot of questions, too, even if, yes, he'll regress a bit without Chris Paul. But without defense is not mesmerized by CP3 and Booker, I think role play Players like Cam Payne and Cam Johnson are going to look exactly like they did before this season. But I still like the Suns to get a top four seed next year if CP3 doesn't come back. A top four seed. They would have a huge point to prove that it wasn't all Chris Paul. And teams with a chip on their shoulder always do well in the regular season. They're actually going to miss him in the postseason. I think it would be a second round exit for them when they have to face another top team. Losing Chris Paul like that would hurt, but they would obviously make that trade again. I mean, this team isn't going to have the cap space to replace CP3. They will spend a ton of money on extensions like a max deal for Aiton. They'll bring back largely the same squad without major additions. But all they had to give up was Ricky Rubio, Kelly Oubre Jr., bench players, and a 2022 first to get CP3. And he's exactly what they needed. Getting another Chris Paul, though, will be near impossible. But they will try. Before they got CP3, they knew that Devin Booker needed a point guard next to him to unlock his full potential. And Chris Paul did that and a lot more. So maybe that attracts another aging star guard. Is there a chance they get Goran Dragic or Derek? Gross or Kyle Lowry on a sign and trade. Whoever they get though will be a step back because Chris Paul wasn't just a point guard next to Devin Booker. He raised the ceiling of every player, but that ceiling is about to come crashing down. But Chris Paul is not the only big name free agent this offseason. We have ranking the top free agents this offseason and then also just focusing on Kawhi Leonard here and what teams he could go to. Now, I actually, with this latest news, I would probably revise this video a bit I think he has an even better chance of staying with the LA Clippers because they uh, Kawhi has all of the leverage like they're backed into a corner what are they going to do not give him everything he wants so he had a partially torn ACL he had surgery he may be out until next year's playoffs if he even plays next year which is awful for the Clippers we'll talk about that in a later video but if you think about the Clippers like okay uh, Kawhi is in this position where other teams might not want to take a chance on him, maybe. But the Clippers, for all they gave up, they gave up all those picks, their entire future to get him and Chris Paul, uh, him and Paul George, rather. They're, they're, ha they're going to have to give him whatever he wants. So I think there's an even better chance of Kawhi staying with the Clippers. But just in case he leaves, these are the top teams he'll consider.